Hey everyone, S Dub Nation here, and welcome back to a brand new Marvel video here in the channel. I like to stop and take the time to rank all of the MCU directors from all of the MCU movies. Please note that everything that I say in this video is just my very own opinion. My list is certainly not the right list, it is just my list. And please feel free to comment down below your very own opinions or rankings on the MCU directors. Without further ado, let's get into it. Kicking off our list at number 15, we have Alan Taylor from Thor The Dark World. Now, not only did this guy direct the worst MCU movie, he also directed one of the most blandest and forgettable villains in the entire MCU. I do not even remember the guy's name. All I know is that he was a dark elf, and this film is just dark and bland and boring. And it actually makes it worse because the reality stone is in this. I mean, one of the Infinity Stones is in this, and Alan Taylor didn't really do a great job. And it's not dark in tone or theme. It's just dark in color. This movie looks really bad, and it has that MCU kind of style, but it, it still looks bad. But one thing, actually two things that alan taylor did well is that he fixed the relationship between thor and loki and he also kind of fixed the scenes between thor and jane but that's really about it and i do not know why marvel picked him coming in at number 14 we have anna Bowden and ryan fleck now captain marvel i strongly disagree with anybody saying that this f tier with anybody saying that it's at the bottom of the mcu list because it's really not it's actually not trash but the way anna Bowden and ryan fleck directed brie larson is kind of trash itself i mean brie larson is a great actress but the way that she's directed inside of this movie it kind of makes her seem like a feminist trying to be trying to be on both sides of the coin and really she just wants to be on that woman's side of the coin and it, it doesn't help that it's kind of disrespectful to men just a little bit Coming in at number 13, we have Louis Leterrier for The Incredible Hulk. Now, The Incredible Hulk is a movie that I love to defend a little bit. Yes, it is lower on the Marvel list, but that's only because there's only one movie, and we really did. But at least it's fun and a lot CGI of the Hulk in this movie. But I think what Louis Leterrier does better than Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck and Alan Taylor is that he fixed the relationship between Bruce Banner and the Hulk. The Hulk is like a monster to Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner wants to be just this regular guy, the scientist, and he just made one awful mistake, which messed his life up forever. And Louis Leterrier does a great job with that. He actually shows Bruce Banner trying to get rid of this monster, and I love that. And though the movie is not as good as I wish it was, you gotta give him props for that. Coming in at number 12, we have Shane Black for Iron Man 3. I've never seen any of Shane Black's movies, but Iron Man 3 was actually a pretty good one. I mean, it actually showed Tony Stark after the Avengers with him dealing with PTSD. And it actually shows the time frame of the MCU that the Avengers happened in May and Iron Man 3 happens in December around Christmas time. I love the fact that Shane Black has his movies centered around Christmas time because it, it's nice seeing Christmas time in May. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And come on, you got to give Shane Black props for giving us that awesome fight at that warehouse. I think it was a warehouse. I don't know where they were at. I can't really think of the word right now, but you got to give him props for giving us that epic Iron Man fight. Amazing. Next up at number 11, we have Kenneth Branagh from Thor. Now, Thor is actually a nice movie. I, I enjoy that movie pretty much. I actually love it because it has this Shakespearean theme to it, and it's actually pretty nice. The stuff on Asgard looks amazing. I mean, the stuff on Asgard and Thor The Dark World looked amazing as well with Alan Taylor, but the the things that Kenneth Branagh did with Asgard, this is the best that we've ever seen Asgard. Their first appearance was always the best, and I love that. I mean, it, it's, it's just so grandeur and, and golden and spectacular, and CGI looks amazing for its time. I love it. But then Odin had to cast Thor out to Earth, and that's where Kenneth Branagh's direction kind of gets bland when he gets to earth now Kenneth Branagh is a great Shakespearean director but when he gets to the stuff on earth it is just awful kicking off our top 10 list we have Peyton Reed for Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp now I think Peyton Reed did a great job with Ant-Man because it wasn't even his screenplay but Edgar Wright would have made an amazing director and I think he would have been 
way higher on this list if he directed this movie. I know he wrote this movie for like 10 years and he was actually set to direct, but creative differences, Marvel let him go and we got Peyton Reed. Now, Peyton Reed, yes, like I said before, he did a great job with what wasn't his, but Marvel wanted another movie after this and without Edgar Wright's screenplay that gave it the gravitas that was great about Ant-Man 1, we had to have Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Peyton Reed had a little bit more control over that movie. And yeah, it's funnier, it's more lighthearted, because after Infinity War, that's what we needed to see. But as an Ant-Man sequel, uh, I don't know. Ant-Man 1 was a very great heist movie, great screenplay, and I think Peyton Reed did a great job with directing that movie, even though it wasn't his screenplay. But when we get to Ant-Man and the Wasp, I think they were just... They, I think they were just trying too hard with this movie. Coming in at the number 9 spot, we have Joe Johnston for Captain America The First Avenger. Now, this is a movie that I rank lower on my list, but it's mainly because it has a lot of war themes in it, and sometimes it is kind of boring. But I think that's where this director excels at. I mean, I've known nothing of his work. I have not seen any of his movies prior to this or after this movie. I've only seen this movie, and I can say that... I, like I said before, I rank it lower, but I do enjoy it just a little bit. I mean, it it is a coming of age story. The more I watch it, the more I love it, and I I love it every time I watch it. And Joe Johnston gets all the credit for that. I mean, he has the he has the war 1940s thing down pat, and I like the way that this movie is structured. Coming in at number 8, we have Scott Derrickson for Doctor Strange. Now, I would have loved to see him direct Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness. I mean, he brought so much to the table. Yes, Doctor Strange was a kind of formulaic Marvel movie. It had a lot of themes in it from Iron Man, where it was like an arrogant billionaire becomes a superhero, becomes something more than himself. But Scott Derrickson gives us a little bit more, whereas that movie has science, this movie has magic. And we get to see that magic front and center. I mean, we have stuff twisting around we have buildings turning we have floor panels going up and down like a wave it is just amazing and he uses his budget fabulously i mean black panther had a 200 million dollar budget i mean the cgi in that movie didn't even look that well either the color grading didn't look that well either but in here in doctor strange the coloring is a little bit dark a little bit gray but they just use everything about the special effects and i wish that scott was directing Doctor Strange 2 because he could have brought horror aspects to this, but Marvel had to fire him. Coming in the 7th place, we have John Watts for Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, these two movies are two of the same. I mean, they're both little kid stories. They're both teenage stories. They're both coming-of-age stories, and I love them. John Watts has this John Hughes style of filming his MCU Spider-Man movies, and that's what I love about them. They're just teen stories, and Spider-Man just want to be a neighborhood Spider-Man. He wants to be an Avenger at the beginning of Homecoming, but decides to stay at neighborhood spider-man but in far from home he's put front and center as an avenger and i don't know how i feel about that i still wish that we could have stayed neighborhood friendly him staying low to the ground before him taking on the big stuff in far from home and him having his secret identity revealed that was just weird but i love it coming in the sixth place we have james gunn for guardians of the galaxy and guardians of the galaxy volume 2 now these two movies they're great. I, I love them. I mean, they're very cool. I always thought that Guardians of the Galaxy 1 was kind of weird, and I didn't really see how this one was better than the than the second one. I mean, it was darker, and it was more adult than the, than the second one. I am clearly mistaken. The second one is more adult. The first one is a is a treat. I mean, they just work well off of each other. They're funny. They're fun. James Gunn has this great style of, of directing his movies. And especially the fact that he's writing them. And he's writing the jokes as he go along. That's, that's just amazing. And Guardians of the Galaxy 2 just has so much color in it that Guardians 1 didn't have. And I love it. Guardians 2 has just this big vibrancy of colors. And James Gunn directs his movies perfectly well the way that he wants to direct his movies and that's what i love marvel did a good job hiring him back and for good reason too i mean he turned these d-list characters into household names 
Kicking off my top five list, we have John Favreau for Iron Man and Iron Man 2. Now, the first Iron Man is kind of among the best MCU movies in other people's opinion. I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed it a lot. Iron Man was um, my favorite MCU hero until Daredevil came along. But Iron Man 1 was one of those films that you it was just an experience. It was a nice little Gravitop film, bringing Robert Downey Jr. back and him coming for a comeback off of drugs was amazing. John Favreau has this witty style of directing and dialogue, and I think it goes well with Iron Man. And then we had to get a sequel, and Marvel cut down the time frame that John Favreau wanted. Now, John Favreau originally wanted three years to compose a sequel. Marvel only gave him two, and we got Iron Man 2. But Iron Man 2 is very enjoyable, and I think it was one of the funniest movies inside of the MCU, and one of the most rewatchable movies inside of the MCU. And plus, it was the first MCU movie I've ever seen, so I hold it dear to my heart. And I hold Jon Favreau dear to my heart, too, by bringing me this character that I love so much growing up. Coming in in fourth place, we have Ryan Coogler for Black Panther. Now, Black Panther, when I first saw it in theaters, I thought it looked amazing. It was It's, it's visually appealing. It has that MCU kind of style, MCU kind of touch, with just a little bit more richness to it. And I think Ryan Coogler actually made one of the most thematically rich MCU movies and also one of the most serious MCU movies. This movie had something to say and it said it well. And this is why Ryan Cooler comes in at number four because his movies are always good. Fruitvale Station, Creed, those black movies, I love those movies and this one is no exception. I think the only thing that I find wrong about this movie is the CGI, but hey, I I guess that's what Marvel wanted to do, give their movies to this type of CGI company, and they make some trash. But all in all, great movie, great director, great everything. Kicking off my top three list, I have Taika Waititi for Thor Ragnarok. Now, this movie, I enjoyed this movie very much. I really wasn't that much of a big fan of it because I really didn't get the humor when the first time I saw it, but every time I rewatched this movie... It is just a treat. I I love this movie. Thor Ragnarok made me a fan of Thor. And I think that's what Taika Waititi wanted to do with this character. He wanted to bring his livelihood into this character. And Chris Hemsworth does this well. It's all thanks to Taika Waititi's direction. His look on how Thor's world should be like. Thor's world should be Asgardian. It should be Shakespearean, but also it should have a lot of color, should have a lot of grandeur. I mean, we're not on Earth anymore. We're in space. We have big wolf dogs that Hulk can fight, that Hulk can punch in the jaw. We have rock monsters, and that is what Taika Waititi wanted to show because just like I said before, we're not on Earth anymore. We're in space. We're on Asgard. We're on Sakaar. We have all of these different places that have these very distinct color palettes, and I love that about his direction so he made me a fan of Thor again and he was just the best director for this Thor movie. Our runner up at number two we have Joss Whedon for the Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron. Now the first Avengers was a delight. I mean I wish I was a Marvel fan when this movie came out because I enjoyed it thoroughly. I mean I saw it on Redbox like a couple months after it came out. I think after I saw Iron Man 3 and I kind of liked it. I mean I only remembered the Iron Man scenes because I was a big fan of Iron Man at the time and I didn't know that he was just a part of this bigger universe I thought oh yeah he has his own movies and then he appears in you know team up movies sometimes I didn't know he was a part of a bigger universe but Joss Whedon was tasked with this impossible task at the time to bring together all of these characters and interwine all four of these storylines actually all five because we have Iron Man 2 and Iron Man, and then we have the Incredible Hulk, Thor, and Captain America First Avenger. And he brings all of these characters together in this epic one movie. And then we also have Hawkeye that appeared prior to this in Thor. And we also have Black Widow that appeared prior to this in Iron Man 2. And I think that was lovely how Marvel did that. They just sprinkled S.H.I.E.L.D. into each one of the Phase 1 movies. And I enjoyed that thoroughly. I mean, Iron Man 2, they really didn't sprinkle anything. They just poured it all over Iron Man 2 that's what kind of made Iron Man 2 bad but 
we had to get a sequel. So Joss Whedon crafted Avengers Age of Ultron. And actually, I'm a defender of Avengers Age of Ultron. I think Age of Ultron is more enjoyable than the first Avengers. And I think it's more rewatchable than the first Avengers. And one of the most rewatchable Marvel movies. And probably the most rewatchable Avenger movies. Now, this movie, Joss Whedon goes all out in this movie it's bigger it's badder and i personally think it's better i mean this movie has everything it has all the character beats it has all the character emotions and we also have a great villain well ultron was an okay villain i mean the only thing that draws me to this movie is that it's stylized it looks good and also joss whedon has a knack for giving these characters good character interactions but coming in at my number one, we have the Russo brothers. I mean, come on, you you probably guessed this was going to happen. I mean, any fool can direct one movie. I mean, let alone two movies. But these guys, they directed four MCU movies. And all four of them are at top ten Marvel movies. I mean, come on, we have Avengers Endgame. We have Avengers Infinity War. We have Captain America Civil War. We have... A Captain America Winter Soldier which I think is one of the best MCU movies actually top two MCU movies they crafted these movies they directed these movies they worked with the writers to make these movies what they were I mean Endgame was amazing it was one of the best theater experience I ever had Avengers Infinity War was awesome it was the best theater experience I ever had I mean I was on the edge of my seat throughout the entire movie because there was a time frame the directors know how to make conflict I mean come on with the shaky cam that's fine I don't care because the shaky cam looks amazing they crafted these characters and they recrafted these characters to make them in their own image yeah John Favreau had Tony Stark and Taika Waititi has Thor but when you give those characters to the Russo brothers they they become so much more than what they are that's what I love about the Russo brothers because they keep the characters developments they keep the characters fresh they find new ways to make sure that these characters are tortured by their own lives Tony Stark is living with guilt Thor thinks that he should have gone for the head instead of for the chest trying to go for revenge. The whole thing that made him worthy was thrown out the window from that moment in Infinity War. And I love that. Russo brothers know how to do action. They know how to bring these characters together. And they were tasked with this impossible task. Yeah, Joss Whedon had to put together the Avengers, the first Avengers. But... You're talking about making Captain America a household name, making him not your grandma's Captain America no more. You're, we're talking about him kicking guys over a boat. We don't know if they're dead or not. Him slicing people's hands, him throwing knives at their hands and stuff. Awesome. Just awesome stuff. The Russo brothers know how to film action. They know how to do action. They, they're just tops. 